Alan, if you hadn't done anything else, you've raised some beautiful girls that can sure sing, man. Amen. And tag as a bodyguard. He's going to be the bodyguard. I think I can speak on behalf of the family today and tell you thank you for your presence. Thank you for being here for your kindness, for your kind words, your calls, your messages. Thank you, everyone, for all that you've done. Thank you to First Baptist for allowing them to use your facilities here. Thank you to Brother Haynes and Brother Dale who already spoke today. And I know there's much more thanks to be given, but that's just kind of what comes to the forefront of my mind. The family asked me today to present to you Jesus Christ. But before we do that, I just want to talk about Hunter's mustache for a little bit. <laughs> Pitiful. <laughs> and he ain't here to call me fat, so I'm just going to say it. It's pitiful. Lexi hated it. I just wanted to get that out there. They were going to take engagement pictures, and um, Hunter had that little fuzz on his face, and man, I could get Lexi fired up in a heartbeat. I mean, I'd say, boy, those engagement pictures are going to look good with that little caterpillar on his lip, you know. <laughs> he's not going to have that when we take pictures. I said, oh, he's going to have it. And then I tell Hunter, if you're half a man, <laughs> I mean... I knew he wasn't really half a man because he couldn't grow a mustache, but I knew. I thought, boy, if you are half a man, you're going to take pictures of that mustache. And then I'd go find Lexi. You better not let him take it with that. I mean, just back and forth. You go back and look at those pictures. His face was as slick as glass, man. <laughs> just absolutely. She won every time. Lexi was highly competitive. I mean, she was sweet. She was kind, she was loving, she was quiet, she was all those things. But, buddy, you put her in a competition, and if she don't win, you'll be the one crying. I mean, she was highly competitive, and she knew how to win. <laughs> Even if it was a mustache argument, she knew how to win. Sometimes, you've already heard it mentioned, with just a look, Lexi knew how, uh, how to get her way. She knew how to, how to get Hunter over. I, I would love to, uh, I love to get them going at each other. Hunter... He would get all fired up, you know, and Lexi would come up to the seminary a lot of days for lunch, and I would always go sit beside her, and uh, here recently I'd go, she had this contraption that she held Jet with, and she didn't really know how to get it off, but 15 minutes of working on it, and she'd get Jet out of there, and she would hand him to me, and I'd hold him while she ate, and, and I would just, as soon as Hunter would get up, I'd try to find something to get her riled up about, you know, and, and I'd get Hunter going back and forth, and uh, and they would, uh, boy, I just had a lot of fun with that. But uh, he, you know, Hunter always uh, had a very sweet way of referring to, to Lexi. Uh, my smoking hot wife. That's, <laughs> you know, I, he was proud of her. And I mean, he was really proud of her. And that's, that's what he said all the time. Matter of fact, uh, I remember one day Hunter at seminary got into a, a debate with another student and uh, it was a biblical argument, you know, theological debate. Man, they were going back and forth. And, uh, and Hunter got back down into a corner where he couldn't defend his point. And I could see him. He was getting madder and madder, you know. And he said, yeah, well, I got a smoking hot wife. <laughs> I, I mean, the guy was single, so I guess it worked, you know. Hunter turned around, he looked at the front, and I was like, I, I guess that's how you win, you know. I'll tell you, anybody that knows Alan knows that, I don't know if protective is the word, he's a little protective of his girls, you know. I mean, a little bit. Hunter went through the fire to get Lexi, I tell you that. And he wanted to spend his life with her, and she wanted to spend her life with him. And uh, I remember Hunter would come, I, every time I would see him, I told you I like to get him kind of riled up a little bit. Every time I would see him, I would say, how's Alan? How, how's, that, how's that going? How's that going? Are y'all getting to talk this week, you know? Or are you not getting, can she not use her phone, you know? Boy, and he would just, oh, he'd get so fired up, you know? And, uh, and I would say, you know what? You know what, Hunter? I think you ought, you ought to just quit trying. I think you ought to just quit. Because I'm telling you right now, I would have gave up a long time ago. 
And he'd say, well, that's what's not happening. You know, he's, that ain't happening. I mean, he was determined to jump through hoops, go through fire. He didn't care. He was going to get to Lexi, and he was going to spend his life with her uh, someday, somehow. And Lexi would have crawled across glass, across the swam the sea and, and whatever else it would have taken uh, to, to get to Hunter so that they could spend their life together. I guess if there was ever a young couple that I would say was in love, it was Lexi and Hunter. They were in love with each other, and they, they were in love with the Lord. I've been amazed. I, I'm like everybody else that's spoken. I'm like you. I've been amazed at the number of people from all around the world who have reached out to express how Hunter and Lexi positively impacted their lives and, and how they really had such a positive influence on them, especially in just 21 years. It's really no surprise to me because I knew Hunter and Lexi and I knew the potential that both of them had to serve the Lord and, and him as a preacher and, and her as a singer and as a woman of God and as a pastor's wife, a preacher's wife. I knew what they could do for the Lord, but, but man, did they ever impact lives for the Lord Jesus Christ. In 21 years, just 21 years old, they changed more lives than they ever knew. I was thinking about this just last night. If Hunter and Lexi were here with us today, and just let me assure you, uh, I'll get the cart in front of the horse and tell you that they are not with us. They're in a much greater place today. Where you and I hurt, they do not. Where you and I cry, they do not. Where you and I are dying, they are not. They are not. And so, so I do want to go ahead and clarify that. But I was thinking about this. If they were here, and if I could get them here to look on this crowd today, they wouldn't believe it. They, they would have never believed that they impacted this many people. They were humble. At 21 years old, even they, they, they didn't think that they made this big of a difference. But man, this isn't even a fraction of the difference that they made. This isn't even a fraction of the lives that they impacted in just their 21 years of life. They were no common 21-year-old couple. They were life changers. Really, truly, they were. They were people who affected lives for the good. They were people who changed lives. They were, and I know we use this term in our society today as influencers, but they truly were influencers. They influenced people to do good. Haynes said it himself. He, he made him a better friend. They influenced people for all that was good and all that was of God. They affected not just the present, but they affected eternity for people who came in their paths. You just heard Brother Dale give a testimony of Hunter witnessing the two people, telling them about Christ while they were on a youth outing. They affected eternity. Perhaps if those guys accepted Christ, it changed their night. But it didn't just change their night. It changed their forever. That's the kind of people that they were. They were different. They were committed to the cause of Jesus Christ. They were sold out for the Lord. They were special. They were talented. They were beautiful. And I'll just say that because Lexi was beautiful enough for both of them, but truly inside and out, they were a beautiful couple. They were a blessing. You heard Haynes say that. They were a blessing. But most of all, they were servants of the Most High God. They loved every one of you. You say, well, I just came today. They didn't, they didn't even know me. No, but they loved you. They, they didn't have to know you to love you. They loved with a Christ-like love for each other and for others. And I want to ask you this. I'll tell you this about, about, about uh, Hunter and Lexi. They were believers in Jesus Christ. And the question today is, are you a believer? Everybody wants to be a world changer. Everybody wants to be an influencer. Everybody wants to have an impact. Everybody wants to make a positive imprint. As we leave this life, we want to, we want to give something to, to be remembered by. We want people uh, to be positively influenced and affected in our lives, and that's what they did. But what made that possible for them was the fact that they were believers in Jesus Christ. And, and so I don't want to ask you today, are you a world changer? Are you an influencer? Are you leaving a positive uh, footprint and all these things? What I want to ask you today very simply is what made all that possible for them. That is, are you a believer in Jesus Christ? In Acts chapter 3, we see a, another couple of world changers, two guys by the name of Peter and John. 
Acts chapter 3, the Bible tells us that Peter and John, these world changers, these influencers, they were going to the temple to pray. And the Bible says that they came across a man who was lame from his birth. He was sitting at the gate. He was begging for alms. And as they came by his way, he asked them for money. If you're familiar with Acts chapter 3, you'll know that they told him, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. This man, not only did he rise up, not only did he walk, the Bible says he leaped, he ran, he shouted for joy, he worshipped the Most High God who he knew had healed him. They knew the crowd did that day. As they watch, just like you and I have watched Hunter and Lexi live their lives, we've watched them do all these things that we talked about today. There was a crowd that day who watched Peter and John speak in the name of Jesus and heal a man, and it blew their minds. And as they looked on this crippled man who had been healed, they knew this crippled man is the man who's been crippled all of his life. He's the one we've walked by every day. He's the one who cannot walk, but yet now he's leaping and shouting and jumping and worshiping God. And so they ask a question, how'd you do that? You know, we ought to ask that same question today about Hunter and Lexi. How'd you do that? How did you, in 21 years, how did you do this? How did you get this much respect? And how did you get this much love? And and how did you make this big of a difference? How did you make this much of an impact on people in just this short a period of time according to our standards anyway. And when Peter saw it, the Bible says in Acts chapter 3 and verse 12, meaning when he saw the crowd take notice that they had healed this man, when he saw it, he he looked on the crowd and he said, oh, they're being inquisitive. They're wanting to know how we did what we did. He said, you men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? Peter and John said, you need to know something. We did not do what you think we did. And he spends the rest of Acts chapter 3 letting the crowd know that it wasn't them, it was Jesus. Peter and John said, hey, we're not special. We're not any different than you in a sense. We are sinners. We are people. We have failed. We have shortcomings. We fall short of the glory of God. But yet we have one inside of us who can do not only what you've seen here today, but we can do or he can do so much more. It was not them who were so special. It was Jesus. And I know I can say this and the family would agree. It's not just Hunter or just Lexi who was so special. It was Christ that lived in them. That's why they could do what they did in such a short period of time. That's how they could positively influence so many lives. That's how they could be world changers. And so as Peter watched, uh, as people watched Peter and John, they began to ask more questions. Uh, they, They became more inquisitive. Their lives were intriguing to many, just like Hunter and Lexi's lives have been interesting to you or you wouldn't be here today. Their lives were noticed. People became more inquisitive about how are they doing what they're doing. By what name or by what power can they do this? Peter and John started giving more answers as more questions were asked. They answered the questions and they answered them more and more, but they always answered them the same. It's always Jesus. Well, how would you heal the lame man? Jesus. Oh, but how did you do this? Jesus. Oh, but how can you do that? Jesus. How could they influence so much? Jesus. How could they do so many wonderful things? Jesus. How could they preach? Jesus. How could they sing? Jesus. How can this family survive this moment in life? There is many questions, but yet one answer, and it is Jesus Christ. He is the answer. He is the reason. He is the way. They started to answer Jesus Jesus, he's the way. Jesus made it possible for them to heal the man. Jesus made it possible for them to preach the gospel. He made it possible for them to worship. He made it possible for them to sing. Jesus made it all possible. And when the crowd that day took note of Peter and John and they cast light on them, they just simply took the light and they cast it on Jesus. 
We come here today and naturally by our own nature and flesh and tradition, we cast light on Hunter and Lexi. But what Hunter and Lexi did that made them so special was that when you cast light on them, they cast light on Jesus. You see, today we are here to honor them and remember them, but truly we are today here to honor Jesus. The same Jesus Peter and John would go on to say in chapter 3 to the men of Israel, the same Jesus that you rejected is the same Jesus that healed this lame man. The Jesus that you refuse to believe, he's the one who healed this lame man. I don't have time today. Brother Mike didn't give me time restraints, but I'm just going to respect your time here today. And I'm going to tell you in Acts chapter 3 and encourage you to read it that Peter got real point blank with them. This same Jesus who you have rejected, this same Jesus who you have turned away, the same Jesus that you have refused, it's the Jesus that you ridiculed. It's the one that your people beat and spit upon. It's the one that you plucked his beard from his face, that you put the crown of thorns upon his head. It's the one that you put a cross on his back and made him carry it all the way to Golgotha's hill. The same Jesus that you took the nails and you put into his hands and feet, it's this same Jesus. It's the same Jesus that you hated. He's the one at the end of chapter 3. Peter said it's the one that you put on a cross and you crucified and you placed him in a grave and it's the same Jesus that you couldn't kill and you couldn't keep him dead. That same Jesus rose again and he made this man to rise as well. It's that same Jesus. The one that made me so special. The one that makes them so special. The one that's the same one that you've rejected. It's the same one you've turned away. It's the same one that you're angry with. It's the same one that you're mad at. The same Jesus that you turn away is the Jesus that they received. It's what made them who they were. It wasn't them. It was Jesus. Just because they rejected him and even crucified them, it didn't change who Jesus was. You know why Hunter and Lexi loved you, and I can say that even if they didn't really know you? It's because they loved you with a Christ-like love. And what Christ-like love does is it doesn't just love when it's loved. It doesn't just love those who love it back. Christ-like love loves the unlovable. And I want you to know today, that if you're angry with God and mad at God and you reject God and you refuse to ever accept His Son, Jesus Christ, let this settle well in your heart and mind today. He still loves you anyway. You don't have to love Him to make Him love you. As a matter of fact, First John tells us that we love Him because He first loved us. God's not waiting on you to receive him today so that he can love you. God's waiting on you to receive him today because he already loves you. He loved Lexi. He loved Hunter. He loves you. And your disbelief does not change one thing about God. You may not believe that God is real. That doesn't mean God's not real just because you believe that. You understand that, don't you? You don't have to believe the sky is blue. That doesn't make it green. Just because you don't believe it doesn't mean it's not real. You say, I don't ever believe Jesus is coming again. Well, let me let this uh, settle in your mind and heart as well. Your disbelief's not keeping Jesus from coming again. You say, I don't believe in hell, but you can't make it go away. You say, I, I, don't, I don't believe in heaven. Your disbelief doesn't make it real or not. Folks, listen, this Jesus who made the difference in Peter and John's life is the same one who made the difference in Hunter and Lexi's life. Everyone is offered the same Jesus. This lame man was offered Jesus. He received him. Peter and John were offered Jesus. They received him. The nation of Israel was, was offered Jesus. They rejected him. Same Jesus. Same Jesus, same love, same grace, same mercy, same salvation, same everything. The difference is some accepted and some rejected. The difference in Hunter and Lexi's life was that when they were offered Jesus, and rather than rejecting him, they received him. The same Jesus 
that you have rejected. The same Jesus that's been put before you plainly. The same Jesus who died on the cross for your sins is the same Jesus who died on the cross for their sins. It's that same Jesus. He's why they impacted lives and why they were so different and why they were so special. But something different happens in chapter 4 of the book of Acts. As Peter and John begin to talk about Jesus kind of like I'm doing right now, the crowd begins to grow angry. Some of the people in the crowd were tired of hearing about Jesus. And maybe you came today to hear about Hunter and Lexi and now you're surprised to know that truly Hunter and Lexi were all they were because of Jesus. As Peter and John began to preach in the name of Jesus how you crucified him, and let me just say this, you and I crucified him as well. It was our sins that put Jesus on the cross. I am as guilty as you are. The difference is perhaps I've accepted that and you've rejected that. That was the difference with Peter and John. They began to preach Jesus. You killed him, but you couldn't keep him dead. You buried him, but you couldn't keep him buried. Jesus died, rose again, and lives forevermore. And his resurrection gives these dead people resurrection power. His power over sin gives them power over sin. His power over the grave gives them power over the grave. His power over hell gives them power over hell. All that we have is in Jesus. And man, the crowd that day, they didn't want to hear about Jesus. But you're stuck. And you're rude if you get up and walk out. And it's my turn. And Peter and John said, it's this Jesus that you need in your life. The lame man's not the only one who needs Jesus. I need Jesus. And you need Jesus. And the discussion of the resurrection got so intense. The Bible says in chapter 4 and verse 2 of the book of Acts, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They laid hands on them and they put them in hold until the next day for it was now even tied howbeit many of them which heard the word believed and the number of the men were about 5,000. They were grieved. The Bible says they were disturbed. There were some people in the crowd that got so mad that they physically laid hands on, they assaulted, literally that word means they assaulted Peter and John and they threw them into prison. Now I think I can hold my own if you get mad at me today, but I got a whole bunch of bodyguards behind me too. But the reality is this. I've never met one saved person all my life that got mad at me for talking about Jesus. I've never met one person who knew that when they died they were going to heaven, they got mad about somebody talking about the resurrection. I've never one time in my life met one person who was heaven bound, knew that they were saved, bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. I've never met one saved person, not ever, not one, who got mad and said enough of that Jesus talk. Or who got angry. About a week and a half ago, I sat across the table from a man and I began to tell him about Jesus. And he hated Jesus because of things he had endured and experienced in his life. And I told this man, your experiences in life don't change the fact that Jesus loves you. And the man wanted to fist fight me. I mean, literally, he wanted to fist fight somebody else had to hold him back. No saved person's ever done that. Isn't it something? That the people who get so grieved about Jesus and the resurrection and death are those who don't know Jesus Christ as their Savior. You say he's not real, then why do you get so mad about it? You get that mad? Oh boy, let me leave that alone. I'm going to run some stuff. You get that mad about unicorns? Oh, because they don't exist. Why you get so mad about Jesus? Why would you get so mad about God if God's not real? They were grieved. The crowd grows angry, so angry that they arrest Peter and John. They assault them. They throw them into jail. It's so amazing 
that not everybody conformed to their preaching, yet they kept on preaching the Word of God anyway. You know, as, as, as uh, specialists Hunter and Lexi were, not everybody was moved by her singing like I am. You know why? Because I know Jesus. And that moves me. Same for Emily. Same for any child of God that hears a song about Jesus. It moves us. And not everybody's moved by that singing because not everybody's saved. And every person that Hunter witnessed to, they didn't all accept Jesus Christ. And I loved hearing Hunter preach because he was a young preacher who had so much passion and so much potential and so much, uh, so much uh, of, a, of a, a calling on his life and an anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. But, you know, not everybody he preached to believed. Not everybody got saved. Not everybody accepted Christ. Not everybody was moved by Lexi singing. But he kept preaching and she kept singing. Because they didn't do it for anyone other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Many rejected but they continued to preach the gospel due to their commitment. However, many were saved. Let me read this story and we get so focused on that mad crowd there that day. I want you to know you can be so mad. You can get as mad as you want to get mad. I ain't going to get mad at you. I still love you. I have to love you because Christ loves you and Christ loves me. But I'm not going to get hung up on the mad crowd. I want to show you that there were at least 5,000 that got saved there that day. There was a whole bunch of preaching. There was a whole bunch of salvation. There was a whole bunch of rejoicing there that day because the gospel was received. Now notice that the world took notice of that gospel being preached. The Bible says in verse 5 of Acts chapter 4, it came to pass on the morrow that their ruler and elders and scribes and asked the, and the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest gathered together at Jerusalem. A whole bunch of people got together. A whole bunch of mad people. They got together in Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they brought Peter and John, and they just set them in the midst of them. Look at that. Isn't that something? They just set them in the midst of all the people. And they asked them, By what power and by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers of Israel, you people and elders, of Israel. You see, what was it that made them who they were? What made them so different? What made them these people? They, these people became interested. What, what is it that, how did you do this? And, and how is this possible? And, and what brought all this about? And, and notice in verse number 8, he, he said this. He, he, he calls their attention in verse 9. He says, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man by what mean he is made whole, be it known unto you all. Notice this. Here's the answer. Here's how it's possible. Here's how they did it. Here's how you can do it. Here's how I can do it. Here's the answer to everything we're seeking out in life. He said, if you're going to question us on how we healed this lame man, here's your answer. By the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Notice in verse number 12, he said, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name given under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. That's the answer. How do I do what they did? How can I stand on their shoulders and even go further and even impact the world more? The answer is still the same. The question, it's not changed. It's just asked in various ways. The answer has never changed. It's still Jesus. It's Jesus that you have doubted. It's the Jesus that you've rejected. It's the Jesus that you've ran from. It's the Jesus you've tried to prove didn't exist, didn't love you, didn't care about you. It's this same Jesus. There is no other way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And take this how you will. 
But I don't care what religion says or what a certain denomination has told you or even what a so-called preacher preacher will say to you. I want you to know today the Bible says that Jesus is the name whereby we must be saved. There is no other option. There is no... but, 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 But my church teaches... Well, if your church doesn't teach what the Bible teaches, your church is wrong. Oh, well, my preacher said, if your preacher doesn't preach from the word of God and say, thus saith the Lord, your preacher is wrong. Well, our denomination, we, listen to me, I won't go to heaven because I'm Baptist, but I thank God that I got Jesus and that's why I'm going to heaven. It's Jesus. It's the name of Jesus. The world watched Peter and John just like we've watched Hunter and Lexi. And I want you to know the crowd came to the same conclusion that you and I have come to about these two here today. In verse number 13, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, (laughs) that's how the world sees it. Oh, that old uneducated, closed-minded Baptist preacher. I knew he'd get up there and holler about Jesus. If he'd go to school and learn something, you know, I'd just rather stay dumb my whole life, I guess, and go to heaven when I die. That paperwork ain't going to get me in. I can promise you that. They stood back and they watched. And here's the conclusion they came to. They marveled, just like you and I have about Hunter and Lexi. They marveled. It blew them away at all they could do. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. I want you to know today, Hunter and Lexi have been with Jesus. After all the anger subsided, after all of the argument had ended, after interrogation was over, after life actions had been rehearsed, they marveled and they took knowledge of this couple that they had been with Jesus. You know why verse 13 was possible? Because Peter and John believed verse 12 with all of their heart. That there is none other name given under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. Peter and John, much like Hunter and Lexi, left proof that they had been with Jesus. There's no denying it. No denying that they had been with Jesus. They offered proof. You say, what is it? Well, they prayed and they confessed their sins before God and they repented and they asked Jesus to save their soul. That's proof they had been with Jesus. And then they made a public profession and they told others, we've been with Jesus and he saved our soul. The lame man who got up and leapt, that was proof he had been with Jesus. You show me somebody who came in contact with Jesus, I'll show you somebody who left proof that they had been with Jesus. You don't come in contact with Jesus and not have proof. Hunter and Lexi didn't just claim to know Jesus. They proved it. There was proof that they had been with Jesus. They had made a profession of faith. They had, hey, they had confessed Christ as their Savior. They had repented of their sins. They, they were baptized. They were part of the Lord's uh, uh, a local New Testament church. And they served the Lord and brought Him glory uh, in His church. And they were faithful in their living. And they were godly in their commitment. And they were unwavering in their dedication. They were bold in their preaching. They were beautiful in their singing. And the list could go on and on but none of those things saved them those were all proof that they had already been saved it was all just proof that they had been with Jesus and I submit to you today based on the authority of God's word that these bodies of flesh that lie here before us lifeless today is proof And not only have they been with Jesus, but they are with Jesus now. My friend, you can be too. You've been offered the same Jesus. All of this, not because they were nice, good and pretty and all of that. All of this because they had the same offer you have 
And they received it rather than rejected it. This family wants you to know today that one day they'll be all right. Until then, they'll hurt. But they will never sorrow as people do who think or don't know the salvation of their loved ones when they die. Not one moment will any of this family ever shed a tear not knowing where Hunter and Lexi are. They know. And you'll never convince them otherwise. You know why? Because Hunter and Lexi left proof that they had been with Jesus. And when they left this life, they went straight to Jesus. I want to ask you to bow your head today. I want to give you a moment today. A moment to do something not for Hunter, not for Lexi. I don't want you to do something for this family. I want to ask you to do something for yourself, for your eternity today. For the God who loved you so much that he sent his only son to die for your sins. Here we are at Christmas. Believer and unbeliever alike knows that Christmas is about Jesus. And my, what an occasion and an opportunity to shine light on Bethlehem's baby who grew up to be Calvary's Christ, who went on to be the resurrected Redeemer, who lives today as the coming King. And I want to ask you today, do you know Jesus? Not do you know of Him, but do you know Him? Do you know Him like Hunter and Lexi knew Him? My friend, today salvation has been made so simple. If today you know that you're lost without Jesus Christ as your Savior, yet you believe with all of your heart what the Word of God says about Jesus, that He came and lived sinlessly, born of a virgin, that He died on a cross for your sins, that He paid your debt. My friend, today, if you believe with all of your heart that Jesus is enough to save you and get you to heaven, I plead with you today, not for anyone else but your own self. Repent of your sins today. Turn from those ways of sin. Place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Ask Him to forgive you, to come and live inside of you, to give you eternal life. My friend, today, if you'll accept Christ as your Savior, the natural thing that will happen is that you will produce proof of that decision. Like Hunter did, like Lexi did. You say, I don't believe. Hear me well. Jesus still loves you. And as long as you're drawing breath, the offer is still there. But it has been made evident to us that none of us know when that last breath will be. So I encourage you. This stage of preachers encourages you. This grieving family pleads with you. Receive Jesus today. Father in heaven, we ask you to comfort the family. But Lord, I know, because I know them, there would be no greater comfort in all the world than if they knew that somebody got saved right here today. And we pray because of the passion that Hunter and Lexi had, we pray today for lost souls. God, I know that surely there are some here today whose heart has grown cold and hard and calloused. Perhaps even for years and years they've never believed. Lord, I pray today My, what a tragedy it would be for Hunter and Lexi to live such a convincing life of proof and then us to waste that legacy and reject it. Father, please help us to really consider what is before us today. Help us to really think about your son, Jesus Christ. 
God, we thank you for the 21 years we did get. And I know we agree, we understand. It is so hard to come to grips with that we really didn't even deserve 21 years. But man, did you ever make them special. And we could never thank you enough for your grace and your mercy and your love. Thank you for Hunter. Thank you for Lexi. Thank you for Jet. But God, we thank you above all for Jesus. It's in his precious and holy name we pray. Amen.